Hey folks, uh, this lesson is multiplied fractions. This is uh, lesson 2-3 in our textbook, and don't forget all your lessons can be found at mrmathblog.com. And here we go, how can we uh, multiply fractions is our question right here. So so here we go, Stan, uh, Sam s still has four-fifths of his brick wall to build. If he finishes one half of the remaining part today, how much of the uh, wall will Sam build today? Okay, so if he has four-fifths and he's gonna do half of that, then what we're gonna do is multiply those fractions right here. So we're gonna multiply one-half times four-fifths and write the product in simplest form. All right, so remember, when we multiply uh, fractions, we can just multiply the numerator, so top times top over, and over bottom times bottom. Okay, so one times two is two, and then three times five is 15. So we'll do that trick with this guy right here. And then, of course, we're gonna have to reduce it at the end right here. So let's go ahead and multiply the top times the top and the bottom times the bottom. So one times four is four, two times five is, is 10 right there, okay? So we get um, uh, four tenths right there, okay? So now we're gonna simplify uh, with the GCF. So the GCF of four and 10, what's the biggest number that goes into four and 10? Well, two goes into four and two goes into 10. So what we're gonna do is divide both the top and bottom by two right there, the GCF. So, um, uh, so four tenths is gonna be four divided by two and then ten, over 10 divided by two. Okay, here we're just dividing by one. So when we divide by one, it won't change the value, anything over itself. As long as we do it to the top and the bottom, it won't change the value, it'll just change the look. So four divided by two is two, 10 divided by two is five. So the answer is two fifths right there. So one half times uh, four fifths equals two fifths. So Sam will build two fifths of that brick wall today, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and multiply these mixed numbers and we're gonna write the product in simplest form, okay? So um, let's estimate first. So one and one fourth is close to one. It's called a benchmark right there. One and two thirds is a little bit closer to two. So we'll put two right there. So it's gonna give us one times two or two. So as long as we get an answer that's close to two, then we can say our, our answer is reasonable. All right, so we're gonna change these mixed numbers to uh, improper fractions. Do you remember how we do four times one is four and then four plus one is five? That's how we get five over four. Okay, so this one's gonna be three times one is three, three plus two is five, so this one's gonna be five over three. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and multiply the fractions. So five over four times five over three, five times five is 25, and then um, uh, four times three is 12. Okay, so we'll write the product as a fraction or a mixed number in simplest form. Okay, so 25 over 12 reduces to two and one twelfth. And I did that up here. 12 goes into 25 two times. Two times 12 is 24, so there's one left over. So it starts up here, two and one twelfth right there. Okay, all right, so since the estimate is two, then our answer answer of two and one twelfth is a reasonable answer right there, okay? So one and one fourth times one and two thirds is the same as 25 twelfths or two and one twelfth right there. All right, all right, so explain whether the product of one third times three fourths will be less than or greater than three fourths. Okay, so whenever you multiply a number times something that's less than one, it's always gonna be smaller than the number. So when we multiply any number by a fraction less than one, the product will always be less than the, the number. Okay, so one third times three fourths, one times three is three, three times four is 12, three twelfths, and then we divide that by three is one, divide that by three is one fourth, one fourth is definitely less than three fourths right there. All right, okay, let's evaluate four fifths times um, the quantity six times uh, three eighths using the order of operations. Okay, the order of operations says we have to do the parentheses first right there. So let's go ahead and estimate, and we'll estimate using benchmarks, okay? Four fifths is close to, well, a benchmark, you guys, a benchmark is numbers like zero, one half, or one. So this is close to one. Uh, one. This is gonna be close to a half, so you can see that we've inserted one half in for this three eighths, because four eighths is one half, and three eighths is a little bit less than that. Four fifths is one, so we'll go ahead and put a one right here. So that'll go right here. Notice six times a half is this three right here, so that's where this three came from. 
So we use the benchmark of a half right there because 4 eighths is a half and then 6 times a half is 3. So that's where this 3 is right there. So let's put the 1 right here and right here. And then 1 plus 3 is going to be 4. So as long as we get an answer that's close to 4, then it's going to be reasonable. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and do uh, the stuff in the parentheses first. Okay. So here we go. 6 times 3 eighths. Okay. So 6 is the same as 6 over 1. Let's put the 1 right there and then we'll multiply it. 6 times 3 is 18. 1 times 8 is 8 right there. All right, now we're going to add 4 fifths plus 8 over 18. We need to get a common denominator. So we're going to write the fractions equivalent uh, using common denominators, okay? So this 4 fifths, the common denominator is 40 between 4 and 8. I'm sorry, 5 and 8 is 40. So we're going to take 4 fifths and multiply it by 8 over 8, and we'll take this 18 over 8. Let's go ahead and put that in right there. We're going to multiply that by um, uh, 5 over 5 right there. Okay, so 4 times 8 is 32. 5 times 8 is 40. Here, 18 times 5 is uh, 90, and 8 times 5 is 40. So we get the common denominator of 40 right there. Now we can go ahead and add. We have the common denominator of 40, so 40 goes right here. 32 plus 90, I think I did that right up here. 32 plus 90 is uh, 122, so 122 over 40. Okay, now can we reduce that? Well, I know these are both even numbers, so 2 can go into both those numbers. So let's go ahead and divide those both by 2. So 12, uh, uh, 12 divided by 2 is 6, 2 divided by 2 is 1, so uh, 122 divided by 2 is 61 right there. And then uh, and you can see I did that right there, so 2 goes into 12 6 times, and then uh, you get 12 and then slide the next one down. 2 goes into 2 once. Anyway, 61. So 61 over 20. And then 20 goes into 61 uh, three times and we get one left over. 20 times 3 is 60, so one left over. So 3 and 1 20th right there. Now, is this close to our estimate of 4? It sure is right there. So since the estimate is 4, then our answer is reasonable. Okay, so um, 4 fifths plus the quantity 6 times 3 eighths. I'm going to go ahead and uh, use uh, 3 and 1 20th, and then I'll change 3 and 1 20th to a decimal. You could have used this improper fraction, but I'm not sure what your textbook is asking right there. So uh, 1 20th, you guys, here's 1 20th. 20 goes into 1.00. 0.05 times, so this becomes 3.05. Okay, so I don't know if you want to write it as 61 20th or 3 and 1 20th or 3.05. This is 3 and 5 hundredths because it uh, goes in the hundredths spot right there. So what if we didn't follow the order of operations and instead worked from left to right? How would that affect our answer? Well, it's going to give us the wrong answer, and I'll show you. Working from left to right, if we add these two numbers first, 4 fifths plus 6, Six is six and four fifths. Change it to an improper fraction is 34 fifths right there. And then if we multiply 34 fifths times the next number, three eighths right there, 34 times three, I did that right over here, is 102. And then five times eight is 40. And then we divide those both by twos and get 51 over 20. And then reduce that to get two and 11 over 20th. So it would give us an incorrect answer. Remember the correct answer was three and 1 20th. We'd get 2 and 11 20ths if we worked from left to right, so it would give us an incorrect answer. All right, so explain how we use benchmarks to estimate the answer. Okay, so benchmarks were numbers like 0, 1 half, or 1, and so when we inserted 1 for that and we inserted 1 half for that, we got a, uh, an estimate of 4 using the benchmarks. So by using the benchmarks, we found our true answer to be 3 and 1 20th, and so that was close to 4, so that told us that that was going to be a reasonable answer. Okay, you guys, I hope that makes sense, and take care.